Hi everyone! Today I'm making a sympathy wreath and this wreath is going to be 100% compostable and one of the keys with making a wreath like this is to be selecting flowers that can actually do okay being out of water in a bit of a warm environment for some time for some hours so i thought i would take you along and show you some of the ingredients that i'm choosing that can hold up after they've been well hydrated into a moss wreath i've already made the wreath frame out of grapevine and i've mossed it with foraged moss from my forest i forage my own moss off of my own farm and that way i can forage in small amounts in various areas in order to allow the moss to regrow. So I've already foraged the moss and I've mossed the frame by wrapping the moss around the frame and tying it on with sisal. So that's where I'm at. Now the frame is going to be soaking in some water while I harvest my flowers. And I'm going for a soft peachy pink with a bit of cream kind of palette although it is going to have some fall nods to it as well to suit September. Ultimately I want it to be feminine and I don't want it to be too colorful. So here's what I have in my buckets so far. I have started with these beautiful dahlias. These are castle drive dahlias and you can see this is usually the color we're going to be getting is more of a soft salmon color. You can see there's a yellow undertone here, a yellow hue in the back petals and some of them are even becoming more yellow with the cooler nights and the changing temperatures into September. So that is where I started and I've brought in some of these dahlias. Now these ball dahlias are Caitlin's Joy and there are some Henriettes in here as well. I have cut some various queen zinnias. These are from a variety of different ones from queen, queen lime peach, queen lime red and there's a variation even within those so I couldn't tell you for sure which is which. Again tie in with these soft feminine tones so we're obviously going into a pinky peachy hues here and I've also brought in these Nicotianias. They're starting to get a little finished which is fine for this wreath. I just want these little dainty bits in my wreath and the soft lemony color ties beautifully in again with these dahlias in the back petal hue in this dahlia and I have grabbed some white Dacus Dara, basically like a Queen Anne's lace, and I especially love these pods when the sea head starts to form. And I also have a few of these Pro Cut Plum Sunflowers, which are just again tying in with that sort of vintagey peachy hue. And I have, if there was one thing that was really bright in my palette, it's these coral bells hanging amaranthus that I'm going to be incorporating into this wreath as well. So I'm in my cutting garden now. I'm here in my perennial section and I'm going to be grabbing a few more things. For starters, I'm going to be grabbing this gorgeous peachy pinky honeysuckle. I also want a few of these gorgeous apricot colored foxgloves, just a few bits to sneak out into this wreath to add another bit of texture to it. My final ingredient are these Autumn Joy Sedums. These are amazing. They hold up so well out of water so I like to use these as part of my wreath base because they're so hardy and so durable. So let's head to the studio now with all of these flowers and I'll show you how I'm putting together this beautiful garden wreath. So my wreath has been soaked and I've given my moss just a light squeeze because otherwise my table will just get soaked full of water. Now I'm going to start here with placing my sedum. And what I'm going to be doing is 
placing stems in, keeping the stems a little bit longer than I might if I was using flower foam and placing them in. Add a bit of a depth and add a bit of an angle so that they can grab on and stay within this moss. Now the great thing about sedum is you don't have to worry too much about whether the stem ends are contained within the moss or whether they're sticking out of the moss because it will hold up without water anyways. So I'm just going to disperse this sedum throughout my frame and I'm going to be using it also to start to get some of my width outside of my my frame so it's going to help me to establish my eventual size and if i have a huge one like some of these what i'm doing is breaking off the individual bits those can be used in other parts of the frame Really, I want kind of a softer and romantic texture for this wreath, so I don't want to have huge, huge chunks. I want them to be a little more delicate. Using a floral knife to make my cuts sharp so that it's easy to insert these properly. Next, I'm going to be putting another basically filler item in. I'm going to be putting my Dacus, my Dara in here. Now I do want to make sure these ones are, these stems are actually set inside of the moss. And for these little dainty ones, I'm going to be cutting them shorter. But these seed head ones, as soon as they start to harden off, they're not really going to really be that wilty. And these larger ones are going to sit lower down. Again, they're just working for me as a sort of a filler to work as a backdrop for everything else. taking all of my actual white ones and making sure that these are interspersed, sort of placed evenly throughout my frame, my wreaths, so that I don't end up with a big blob of white. Now, most of these flowers, if it wasn't clear, as I don't think I mentioned it, most of these have already been cut and they were actually hydrating already. I've had them hydrating overnight. I didn't just cut these straight out of the garden and stick them, I'm not just sticking them straight into my wreath. That would not be successful. Except for the sedums. I know my foxgloves are a little bit hardy, but that something like the sedum I could get away with. But just keep in mind, I didn't actually cut and then come straight in here and start working right away. These flowers need time to rest and recover and hydrate in order for them not to just wilt right away once they're in the wreath. These seed heads from the Dacus are so great as a filler. They are such a nice green. They're, they're very neutral, the green not too warm, not too cold, and just a beautiful texture. Such a good one for me. I find I use them more for their seed heads than their actual blooms. Just a beautiful, delicate texture. And once they've formed a seed head, they're so much more resilient as well. See, I have a few in here that are not white. They are more of the purpley color. 
that is fine because it's that texture I'm after and that soft blushy color is blends perfectly in with everything else I've got going on. This is basically like a classic wreath design where I'm just looking to somewhat evenly disperse my ingredients throughout. I'm also going to be creating some focal points so that it's not too scattered, but mostly I just want to have the eye moving through. I want things balanced and symmetrical, mostly that is. I'm not looking to do any real dramatic modern things with this wreath. I want it to be full of rhythm. Can't get these little guys in, they're just too dainty. So that is where we're at with the two fillers we've put in so far. I'm going to carry on now with the yeah, a spider with the peachy status I have. Status is pretty resilient as well. Now I don't have a lot. I'm just going to kind of place these in some specific areas. Again, I, I'm going to be using this one to both cover my frame but also extend my wreath width out a little bit on both sides. This is such a great one. This one was, this is a call stem that's no good for bouquet work because it's wonky. And um, I actually love when they do this for my wreath work because their crook, the crookedness means that the florets actually face forward, they face in directions. It can be quite handy. Now I'm placing stems from all angles. I'm placing them I want a natural garden style. So my stem angles are going every rich direction. And I'm also working from the sides of this wreath frame, as well as from the top and the inside. So I'm not just putting everything right along the top here. I'm inserting all the way down to the bottom. This has to be considered, we have to think of these as three dimensional objects when we're designing in order to get a beautiful full and rounded shape. The tough thing with moss sometimes is these delicate stems. Sometimes you can do as you do with foam and just insert a hole for a weaker stem with your knife. I love how grabby moss is. When I first started working with moss, I didn't realize how well it holds on to materials. It actually holds on really quite well to materials. It grabs onto them. Trust the moss, that's all I'm saying. All right, I've used up my main fillers. I'm going to be working in some of this amaranthus now, just because this is going to bring such a linear element to my wreath. So I wanna get this in now because it's going to be working its way through some of my focal flowers. I'm going to part this out in a few spots. Grab that one without losing too many pieces because I still need to make sure this is rooted well into my wreath. These are heavy, so if I need to, I can tie these off as well onto my frame. And I'm gonna be weaving them in so that I'm not just getting these huge clumps. So throughout the rest of this process, as I'm adding further ingredients, I'm gonna be weaving those pieces in so they don't take over my whole wreath. Now, amaranthus hold up actually quite well, but what wilts visibly are the leaves. So I'm removing most of these larger leaves. Now I'm staggering my placements a bit just so I don't get a funny look on this. I do not want these two focal chunks here to end up at the exact same place. 
just keeping in mind that I can always go along and edit these pieces as I need to. All right, so here is what we have so far. Now I'm going to start placing my main focal flowers in, which are my dahlias. Now I have a beautiful assortment of dahlias and I've done that intentionally from large lush blooms all the way down to smaller ones to give a varied texture to my wreath. I'm gonna start by placing my largest ones. Now again, I'm going to be keeping the stems a bit longer and making sure that they're inserted along the wreath frame rather than straight up and down. That is just so that they don't fall out because they can be heavy. Starting with one type at a time so that I don't end up with all of them in one spot. And it is helpful with dahlias. Dahlias have a face and so what is helpful with them to get a natural look is to place the stems in at different angles so they're not all facing straight outwards, they're facing to the side, to the other side. As you can see I've created a fairly symmetrical triangle here with my first three. Now I'm going to start placing my last ones in. And what I'm going to be doing is creating groupings for a more natural look so that they don't all have an exact even spacing. I don't want that. This is the color I really wanted. I'm gonna change these because I want a little more color variation. There's two of these that are more blushy and then there's the rest are more creamy. So we're just gonna swap those guys around. Now I have all these lovely little darling ball dahlias. These are gonna go in next. These actually hold up amazing, by the way. Out of water, you'd be surprised with these just how well that they can hold up. I'm not getting traction there. As you put your stems in, you can actually feel if they're actually grabbing on, if you're getting some traction there. Now I'm using these. I know these are more durable, so they're also, don't forget to give yourself your space that you need. Ugh. Sometimes I hit chunks and sections in here where I can't actually get a stem in there. Must be hitting the actual frame. So as you can see, I am grouping. I'm grouping my colors I'm, and I'm grouping my like items. We want a natural look, but we don't want it confusing to our eyes. It's actually gonna be more impactful if we keep things together, we can enjoy them better. Now I'm going to be using these little buds as well. Why not? They are so cute. And they add a smaller thing to your texture right down to these little buds, if I can get these little stems in. I love dahlia buds. I mean, that is how they grow in the garden. So why wouldn't, why wouldn't we use those? All right, now I have these adorable sunflowers. These are going in next. Sunflowers actually hold up quite well once they've been hydrated. And like dahlias, we are setting those in on an angle because they all have a face and I don't want them all sticking straight out at us. We want this to be a wreath that speaks to us from all angles, not just one angle. 
Now another one that holds up actually surprisingly well out of water is the Zinnia. Of course these aren't going to be completely out of water in this case, but these work really well for boutonniere work. It's, you'd be surprised. Now if you recall, I had a variety of color for my zinnias, so I am just being mindful of which ones are going to go where. I had this brighter dahlia here, so now I can use these larger zinnias in the same hue to extend my color and make it make sense. And it's creating line for me. So I'm getting a line from here to here to here. So what I want is a little bit of that color right up in the top here. All right, so I'm just using one color at a time until I have use that color up. The only thing with zinnias that can be challenging is those stems are hollow near the top. So sometimes you can collapse them when you're trying to like, I've lost this one. So that is another reason why it helps to keep the stems a bit longer. I'm gonna plop this very yellow dahlia up here. I need some up here. So that is most of our ingredients. I am going to place these foxgloves in now. I only have a few and I just want them for that little garden nod, that little bit of different texture. They're gonna bounce around a little bit, create a little more dimension as they are linear. Likewise with the honeysuckle, bringing us a little bit of that old time garden that wildness that's going to break up the symmetry, bring a little bit of different element here. We have to spray it all? The whole thing. No, no, but spray the whole thing for me. Keep, keep it moist. All right. I have my little helper here right now to help hydrate this wreath. So I'm spritzing it just with plain water just missing it really well i'm not you are though and just to keep things hydrated because believe it or not i just got a whole bunch of 10 year old 11 year old boys here for a birthday party <laughs> i'm just trying to finish this up but i've got that going on and it's a bit warm so just to help keep things hydrated while we finish up here so this is nicoshania it's a beautiful lemony color i'm going to be putting bits of this in as my final ingredient here. It's going to help to give me the little bits of dainty texture that I'm looking for. So I don't even mind if it's finished in terms of flowering. That is totally fine because it's here for the texture. And I'm just going to be inserting it in between my main floral ingredients tucking it here and there so Everyone's putting some cool. longer ones near the back here and again just working systematically is really the key to working quickly and getting one ingredient at a time you hear the amount of fun that is happening out there right now. There is a giant farm slip and slide happening out there at the moment. Now everywhere that I have 
a stem of this on the outside. I am adding a few more from the side to the middle to the front to bring the eye all the way around the frame. As the final step for this wreath, I'm going to put in the last of my amaranthus. I saved a little bit to be able to make sure that it's cascading over top of parts of my wreath. So that'll be my final touch. Now, ultimately, in order to finish, I need to hang my wreath up in order to have a full look at it. All right, here she is. I was running out of light in the studio, so I thought I'd bring her out to the gardens from whence she came. So my next step with the wreath is to spritz it fully all around with water and then store it wrapped in plastic. And what that does is it creates a hydration chamber and a, a way for the surface areas of all the flowers to keep absorbing moisture and to be in really, really tip top condition for when it goes out. So wrapped in plastic, spritzed with water, and then stored somewhere cool, ideally the cooler, but somewhere cool would also be helpful. And it can sit like that until it goes out. It will stay hydrated for a very long time. So that is the next step for this wreath to keep it in great condition and give it a hydration boost before it needs to go and survive some potentially warm sunshine exposure and things like that. I just wanted to show you now we're at the next morning. So this wreath has sat overnight wrapped in plastic, as I mentioned, and I have spritzed it with water. I just want to show you what it looks like now. It just sat outside and it's fairly cool the evenings now, but it's probably still double digits in the evenings here in Celsius. So all I did was just wrap it in layers of plastic and now this is at the point where it's been made now for 18 hours and it's already gone through a warm afternoon so you can see just how well it has held up here so i can continue storing it like this and the reason it works so well is that by covering the surfaces with spritzed water, all of the surface areas, all of the petals, they continue to absorb water, not just through the stems. And I think that's something we sometimes don't realize or we've lost or forgotten about working with flowers from the pre-foam era. So all of the surface areas are able to absorb water and stay hydrated as long as we keep it moist and keep that somewhere cool. So that's how it looks now and it's looking fabulous still. So I hope this was helpful for you to see what can actually be done with flowers, with moss, in trusting the moss and also working with flowers that can handle being out of water for longer periods of time. It is definitely possible and just look how gorgeous this wreath from the garden really is.